What's going on guys, John Oliver here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're gonna look at sliders and custom kinter. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at sliders and custom kinter, but before we get started, if you like this video, wanna see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guidebook. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com, you get all my Kinter courses and all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the slider in custom Kinter, and this is the slider. It slides, it goes left, it goes right, it can go up, it can go down, and we could change the color and do all kinds of things with it. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series, so check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file, I'm calling it ctk underscore slider. It's our basic custom Kinter starter code that we always have. Let's come down here and let's just create our slider. So let's call this my underscore slider. And this is gonna be a custom tkinter dot ctk slider. And we wanna put it in root. There are lots of different things we could do with this, but we almost always wanna set a from underscore and we'll start at zero. And the reason why we use an underscore with from is because from is a Python keyword, so they have to change it around a little bit, so they put a little underscore after it. So from zero, it starts at zero, and then two, let's have it go to 100. And that's really all we need. Now, you're also gonna wanna give this a command uh, so that whenever you slide it, you can actually do something with the return value. And it's gonna return a number, basically, a decimal. So let's give this a command of sliding, <laughs> I don't know, and we'll have to create this. So let's just come up here real quick. And let's say function, and then let's define sliding. And this will take some value that gets passed from the slider. For now, let's just pass. Okay, so that's really all we need right out of the box. So let's go my underscore slider dot pack, and let's get the pad y of like 40. And up here, I called this my slide. We want to call this my slider. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and just run it, see what this is. Head back over to our terminal. Um, in my ctkinter.com directory, and let's run python ctk underscore slider.py. And when we do, we get the slider. You can see it's started right in the middle here. By default, we could go down, we can go up. It's not actually doing anything when we do that, but we'll look at that in just a second. Now, you'll notice, like I said, it started out right in the middle. You can define exactly where you want it to start. If you want it to start at zero, 100, whatever. To do that, super easy. Just come back over here and let's define starting point. And to do that, we just go my underscore slider dot set and then just pass in any number. So if we want to start it at zero, you just put in a zero there. So if we head back over here, run this guy again, now you'll notice it started over here at zero or what we think is zero, the left side, right? So, okay, that's cool. Now, how do we get it to actually do something? Like, okay, we could slide this around, but it's not really doing anything. So. Uh, what can we do here? So super simple, head back over to our code and up here, anytime this slides, it's calling this function and it's passing the value. Now the value is gonna be a decimal. So we can, let's just come down here and create a label real quick. And let's call this my underscore label. And this is gonna equal a custom tkinter.ctk label. And we wanna put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing for now. Let's give this a font of say Helvetica and like a size 18 so it's nice and big. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy and give it a pad Y of say 20, push down the screen a little bit. So we've got this my underscore label here. Now let's update that label with whatever value is currently being output on the slider. So let's go my underscore label dot configure and let's set the text equal to whatever this value is. And like I said, this value is getting passed by the slider widget automatically whenever we move it. Now I called it value. You could call it X if you want, call it anything you want, but it's sending the value. So I think we'll call it value. And that's what the documentation says anyway. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. And now when we grab this thing, boom, you'll see 12.017. And this is a decimal. And for me, I don't love that. It goes all the way up to 100, which is weird. It should be a 100.0, right? But all right, whatever. I Maybe you want that granular amount of you know decimal, 
to me, I just want the actual integer. So we could quickly change this. We could just call the int function and wrap that value in that. If we save that and run it, now 28, 29, 50, it's a whole number, it's an integer, and I kind of like that a little better. So, all right, that looks cool. We're passing the value. What if you just want to get what this is? If somebody's drug it around and then they stopped and maybe later on you want to know, oh, what, what was that number again? Right, you can get it anytime you want get. We get a lot of things like uh, entry boxes and things like that. Let's come down here to our original label and let's just set that text to my underscore slider dot get. And so you can call my underscore slider dot get anytime you want and it will return whatever the slider currently is. So if we save this and run it, just by default, it's gonna be zero or 0, 0.0, 0, I guess. And that doesn't interfere with the sliding mechanism. Very cool. So really that's kind of all there is to it, uh, functionality wise. Now we can customize this thing in a bunch of different ways. First off, we can set the orientation as well to say vertical. It's horizontal by default, but we can set it to vertical. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Oops, uh, we, need a, we need a comma. There we go, there we go. Run this guy again. And now it goes up and down. You can't see the label because it's <laughs> off the screen there. But uh, if you like that, that's cool. Now, like I said, by default, it's horizontal or you can just call it as horizontal like that. So that's cool. We can set the number of steps. So by default, it just goes by ones. Every time you drag it, it goes from zero to one to two to three to four. You can set the steps to anything you want. So if you wanted it to go from zero to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40, whatever, you can set the number of steps. When we do that, if we go one, see it, it bopped right to 10. If I move it again, boom, bops to 20, 30, 40, 50. That's kind of cool, all the way up to 100. Very interesting. And as far as functionality, that's pretty much it. Now, the rest of the customization is very much like the rest of the widgets in Custom Kinter. You could set the width of you know anything you want. Let's say 400. You could set the height to, I don't know, let's say 50. It's gonna make this very big and <laughs> sort of fat. And the width really is the width of this sort of slidey area here. And I guess the button as well, but very interesting. So that's cool. We can change the border width. And I find this to be a little confusing. So let's change this to 20. If we run this, the whole thing got skinnier which is kind of weird. So you play around with these numbers. Um, if you change this to uh, 90 or something, or let's just go 100. You can see now it's, I, I'm not even really sure what's going on here. <laughs> like it's hard to visualize what this is. So I tend to not really use that. Um, so I'm just gonna take that out because that's annoying. But that's border width. We can change all of the different colors. So let's go FG underscore color. And let's set that equal to red or something fairly obnoxious Come back over here, run this guy. And this refers basically to the slider, the unslid part. So when you slide it, this has been slid, I guess, <laughs> I don't know. And the rest of it is red. So that's cool. We can change the progress color. I guess it's not the slid color. It's the progress color. Uh, so let's set that equal to, I don't know, green or something fairly ugly. Uh, run this guy. And then when we slide it, the part that's slid <laughs> is the progress color that's now green. So that's cool. We can change the button color. Let's set that equal to say yellow. So the button obviously is the little slider tabby thing that you're gonna pull, right? And you'll notice it's yellow. When we hover over it, it changes to a different color. That's the hover color. You'll never guess how we change that. It's the button underscore hover underscore color, of course. And uh, let's say orange or something very, very ugly. So now when we hover, it turns orange. If we go away, it goes back to the regular color. Super easy. And really that's pretty much it. We can change the state of this thing to say disabled. When we do that, the whole thing just is locked. I'm hovering, nothing is happening. I'm trying to drag it, nothing is happening. It's just been disabled. Uh, likewise, you can re-enable it by setting that to normal. So I'll just leave that at normal. And then the last thing we could do is set the hover to false. 
If we go ahead and save this, it's going to do just what it sounds like. Now when we hover over it, it doesn't change to orange. The thing still works fine, but now it doesn't change color when you hover. Maybe you like that. Maybe it fits your design, whatever. Uh, very cool. So that's the slider. Super easy. Not a whole lot of bells and whistles to it, but you really don't need a whole lot of bells and whistles for your slider. It does everything you would want it to do and just that easy. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.